Hi, I'm Chantel. And I'm Matt. And this is our school bus. This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today. You can build your very own variety pack using my code FLORB for $5 off. Also, for my Canadian and British fans, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada in the UK. And remember to subscribe. We had the idea of moving to Canada and buying a van originally, it was originally a van, but um, once we got over to Canada, we had a look at like van prices and it was just crazy. And then we just thought, you know what, we can have a look at school buses. And we love the idea of traveling. Like we've both individually have traveled a lot around the world, seen a lot of places. So we just decided we can't travel anymore because of COVID. So yeah. let's travel Canada instead. When we started looking around, the, like we had zero experience on how to convert anything. Like I'm, I'm an artist background. I did a little bit of wood sculpture, but that is literally all the experience we had. Yeah, I, I had zero. So we did like a 3D model, like never used it. No. Um, we just kind of started building. Kind of winged it in a way, but like you have a basic layout. We knew the bed was going to be at the back. We knew we wanted the kitchen this side and the countertop we, this side. Matt loves to cook. So this was basically like, okay, a whole wall will just be the kitchen. A lot of people kept saying, just especially like our parents, like you need to have a plan step by step. No. And we're, yeah. we're not step by step people. No, we just wing it. Let's just, just, just yeah. see how it goes. And I remember your dad was like, there's no way you're going to possibly get this done winging it. And we were like, yeah, we've won it. Like we've won everything else in her life and the yeah. thing is you can change it like nothing is concrete and like especially once you've been living in a while like you see the different things yeah. you actually need and like finishes everything that's what we learned <laughs> you can let it everything is like <laughs> hidden with a finish just put some nice wood on it and you're good but i say we got it mostly complete in three months yeah but the bus was two thousand four hundred dollars yeah two thousand four hundred we weren't money conscious about it but i think in the end 25 we put into it Welcome to the outside of our Lost at Last bus. GMC, I think it's got a 5.7 litre engine in. Most of the mechanics that worked on this thing said it's got a pretty good engine. We knew we didn't want to go big school bus because we wanted to park wherever we wanted, park in cities and stuff like that. It took like three days of like sanding it back and then um, covering all the windows and stuff like that. And then we just got a sprayer off Amazon. It was like $40 and we went to Sherman Williams and got some direct metal paint. I would say to anyone, if you want to use that sort of pain, it's, it's great. For some reason, this was a lock that it was just so hard to do. We don't know why, but we put a nice little doorknob on there. We did toy with the idea of putting like an actual door on there, but I just didn't like the look of it and I like the original doors like that. So that's why we went with that. This is just our plug-in, like an, an RV plug-in. Everyone should put one of these in, definitely. Especially in BC when it's not the summertime, it's raining all the time. Any chance we got, we plug in electrical system. I bought this unit as a one -er. like I bought this, it came with this and these three units on here and the solar panels up there. This is the Victron Multi Plus 3000 watt inverter charger, the smart charge controller. Also in the back we have the DC to DC charger which basically charges your batteries as well so if there's no sun you drive for a four or five hours it'll just constantly be trickle charging the uh, your your batteries for the system we have 400 amp hours of batteries and like our kettle in there we've got electrical stove basically all our stuff we use in there is electric so it just drains the power quite easy which we didn't know that was a learning curve for us we have that freshwater walk tank here and then underneath the bus that was where the grey water is and that's what I found the most frustrating thing on the bus hooking the grey water up <laughs> but the grey water is 25 gallons and the fresh water is a 30 gallon tank this is a water heater which is like 1800 watts so it uses a lot of power so if we're plugged in then we'll turn this on if we've not plugged in we probably keep it off most of the time um, with the water system it's got the water accumulator, the water pump, which runs back and then goes off into two separate systems. One would be the shower and one being the, um, the faucet. I basically just bought an RV ladder and cut it down to size, which is perfect. I see some people building it and we could have probably built one, but at the time I was just like, you know what? I was just in a rush to get on the road. So we just put this one on. On the top of the bus, we have two 350 watts of uh, solar panels. So like I said, it came all in a package. We basically just designed these bars that it went on, on both sides, on which were strapped to the ribs of the bus. And then we put beams going across 
for the um, for the solar panels to sit on. This little antenna is a cell booster because we go out to remote places and we just kind of wanted a little bit of signal. So that was a cell booster there. The deck, which we thought we'd be on it all the time, all the time, all the time. But then, I mean, it's like one drink and you're off. You need to get off this thing just in case. But we did the same thing for the deck where we put like a metal, two metal bars going down. Then we put little metal bars across it, which were black at the start of it. But then after a few days in the rain, it goes nice and rusty colored. We had an awning as well, which we basically can put all the way out. And it's like a, a seven foot awning that goes out. This is just basically where the water goes in. It's got, take this off, fill up, and it's just got a little vent here as well. And then you can put it on city water, but we never, we never bothered. Or we're never in one place for long enough. So we just fill up wherever we can. There's not much to say about this one. This is just a toilet vent. And moving on, this is Chantel's creation of the stop sign. You're not supposed to have the stop sign on, it's saying stop, so we just thought we'd paint it, and make it look really pretty. And yeah, that was all Chantel. Okay, well, welcome inside the bus now. We didn't change too much up here. Um, we have our backup camera here. And then the main thing that we changed would be adding the passenger seat. I know a lot of people don't add in the chair um, to their bus builds, but I highly recommend it. One of the biggest things we realized um, when we were redoing the bus, we took the roof off, which was like the metal roof. Then we were taking that off. We it, kind of went into taking off all the metal that's usually here. And we took that off and realized it was just empty space behind it. So we were able to make lots of storage. We started covering things in the bus with cedar. And as everybody knows, the cost of cedar skyrocketed. So we came up with this idea to use pallet wood. So we stripped probably like 30 or 40 pallets down. Um, and up front, all we literally did was we didn't even join it or anything. We just cut it off, cut straight lines, put some wax on it and then put it up. And we just used nails to put it all up and finished it that way. Here's kind of our couch area. Um, this would be probably one of the parts of the bus I would like to change. If I was to rebuild it, I would do two seats with a table in the middle. The table collapses down and makes kind of a bed situation. For now, what we do for the table is we just bought, and this is like your boat kind of mounting situation here. And with the extra part of our countertop, we were able to make a table. And then our gas tank for our diesel heater actually sits back here. Um, so we've rigged up the situation. <laughs> put this down, unscrew it there, put the diesel right in there, and the diesel heater comes down, and then you have your heat come out right here. Here's our wet room. Uh, we decided when we were building the bus that we definitely wanted to have some form of shower. All real tile, it never cracked. Um, we have all of our bathroom storage, which worked well for us. Uh, we had like our toothpaste, all of our different lotions. We have our nature's head composting toilet, which I'm sure most of you guys know about. Had some issues getting used to the when to empty the pee, which I'm sure most people know about. But other than that, it was, it was fantastic. Um, and then what we added for the shower, is just basically, um, I have really sensitive skin. So this acts as a filter and it also raises um, the water pressure. So that's why we have this um, shower head here. And then we have our shower door um, and that's a self-cleaning shower door so it doesn't stay wet which is great as well and that just folds back there here's our bed um, we wanted to make sure that we had some access to underneath it so all of our dirty clothes went under here honestly we we had an access I had a couple yoga mats here um, but really it was just for our laundry and we loved it you could just close it back up and not worry about it. So that was great. Um, the bed is up quite high because we have all of our storage in the back. So what we did is we just added these two little steps. We have our two different areas where we put all of our clothing here. Ended up making this because me and Matt had our laptops out in the beginning. And I always kind of like shoved mine under the pillow and it was okay. Matt left his right here. One day we stopped the bus really fast and it flew off and it smashed. So after that tragic incident, I made a lovely little laptop holder and it lived there. <laughs> and then uh, we had just our two little shelves either side. We had this hook here. Um, we used this for Matt's uh, camera bag when we were dri driving around. We just hook it on here. 
so nothing would move. Matt loves to cook, so we knew we wanted a massive kitchen, as big as we possibly could. So a spice rack was um, on the top of the list. Um, we also have a magnet for our knives, um, and then just your flour, your sugar, and things like that. Um, we have a mini fridge. It's just AC. I know some people put DC in, um, but we did okay with this one. And um, here is just all of our like towels, things like that. Um, we have all of our utensils, so you have like your forks, your knives. This comes off and these actually go in there. We have all of our upper cabinets, which we have all of our plates and our cups. The kettle, um, just in case the electric kettle is not able to work because we're on the road. We have our sink here. Um, what we did is we have a dish drying rack right on here and these both come out. And then when we're driving, we would just take our cutting board and it sits right in like that. So then all the dirty dishes we don't want to do go in there as well. And then we have our toaster oven over here. Down here is all of our pots and pans. I just made little sections for it so that they don't rattle around. And this is also where we keep our stove. So that just pulls out. And we love this because it goes back down and then we have all this area with no stove on it. I made this fruit hammock. Um, I basically just took two pieces of wood, macrame all the way down and then added these little hooks because I think a lot of people notice with these hammocks if you don't add the hooks and you're driving. So all I did to fix that was add some hooks and everything stayed in nice and neat. And I think that would definitely be it. I think the build process is so different for everyone. Like we have friends that did like spend like three years and we have known people that have spent longer than that, but it depends on working and things like that. And so I think the build process itself is always gonna be different. You yeah. can definitely do it for cheaper than we did it. We just, like I say, had the budget to do that. But if you get secondhand stuff, reused woods and stuff like that, like you can always find deals on flooring, on tile and stuff like that. Secondhand like fridges, so. I think you can do it to a, a small budget if that's if that's what you want to do. If you don't have the budget right away, you can definitely live in something that's not fully finished. Like put in a bed, put in something to cook on, and then put in a couple seats, and then go from there. It's gonna be the best thing you ever do, <laughs> for sure. It's gonna change the way you look at things. Um, it's gonna change the way you look at like just your surroundings, make you appreciate the smaller things so much more. You're gonna meet an amazing community. Everyone supports each other. You're gonna learn a lot about yourself. You're gonna learn a lot more skills that you never thought you would be able to do. Be able to trust yourself a lot more. But yeah, just, just give it a go. <laughs> See what happens. When I started eating mainly a low carb diet, I stopped eating cereal and I really missed it. That's why Magic Spoon is so great. Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented with zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein and only four to five net grams of carbs in each serving. Honey Nut has one gram of sugar and only 140 calories per serving, which makes it keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free and low carb. The cereal bars have one gram of sugar, 10 grams of protein, four net grams of carbs, and only 130 calories per bar. Click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today. You can build your very own variety box and use my code FLORB for $5 off. You can choose from the best selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, and maple waffle flavors, plus other awesome flavors, including honey nut, blueberry muffin, and cinnamon roll. You can also add the cookies and cream and cocoa peanut butter flavored cereal bars to your variety variety box. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use my code FLORB for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com forward slash FLORB to save $5 on your order today. Also, for my Canadian and British fans, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and the UK. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.